<laughs> All right. Is there a light? I'm back. So, <laughs> thanks for showing up. Uh, yes, I am back. Uh, Ernest, uh, thanks for sending me the pirate rum, or as we call it, parat. Um. So yeah, I took a break and now I'm back. <laughs> and I enjoyed every minute of the break. Um, I had my weekends back and it was awesome. Um, and I haven't done a single thing uh, with the arcade or anything arcade related at all. Uh, so the basement is pretty much exactly as it was the last time I did a video. Um, I'm kind of tethered to my computer, but nothing's changed down here. 
Um, Paperboy is still down. Uh, iRobot and Firefox are still down in the corner. Um, I did get a, uh, a new PCB, or actually my PCB repaired for iRobot. So maybe we can uh, put that in in one of the videos. Um, but today, we're going to keep it kind of light. And, uh, you know, I haven't done a video in a long time, and it does feel a little odd. <laughs> but I was thinking that today uh, we could do a John's Quest 4. Uh, we haven't done that in a long time. Just kind of keep it light and do some viewer mail. I have some videos planned uh, maybe later this week. And uh, if this live thing kind of works out, maybe this can kind of become a regular thing. I don't know, once a month or, or, or less or more. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I, I'm back, and uh, I, I got to fix stuff. Paperboy, I, I uh, replaced the bridge rectifier on the transformer assembly, but never put it in. Um, and like I said, iRobot, I had the, uh, the PCB repaired, and I never even tried it. Um, I noticed that the uh, computer spaceball monitor was kind of twitching when I turned the arcade on earlier. But other than that, nothing has changed down here. It's exactly the same as it was. <laughs> When we left off in the garage, I still have turtles. I, I powered that on over the weekend. It's working. So maybe we can work on that. Uh, Bronco's still in the garage. Um, I do want to bring uh, NBA uh, Fast Break back to the basement. Um, it's at the hangar right now. And I want to shop it and put LEDs in it. So maybe we could do that. So for now, John's Arcade's back. So what do you guys want to do? I, I got to clean up here. I made a giant mess from that popcorn machine box. Um, Oh, by the way, I have to thank whoever sent me that popcorn machine because I honestly don't know who sent it. Um, it came to my, uh, to my P.O. box. So whoever sent me the, uh, the popcorn machine, thank you very much. Um, the other one is buried in my backyard. Not really, but <laughs> it was fun to pretend. Um, <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's hang out and let's play a little Donkey Kong and like I said, we're going to kind of keep it light today. I, I don't really have a, a serious plan for this video. Um, I just kind of wanted to do it live and just kind of show you guys what's happening here. But basically, I took a break uh, and I just wasn't really wanting to restore games and, and work on this stuff. Um, you know, I did a lot of it and uh, it does take up the weekends. But I think... The rest of the year here, fall and winter, it'd be kind of fun to get back to it. So, all right, let me turn this light off. And like I said, we're just going to kind of keep it light in this video. And we'll play a little Donkey Kong. We'll do some viewer mail. We'll have some rum. Um, holy cow, there's 900 people. <laughs> Wow, there's 920 viewers right now. I, yeah, I didn't think that was gonna happen. <laughs> Thanks guys. And uh, I see the uh, super chats coming in. Thanks uh, CC Games. <laughs> wow. All right, so let's, let's talk about Donkey Kong. So um, as you guys know, this is the first game I ever got and uh, still have it. I don't see how I could ever get rid of it. Um, I've told this story a gazillion times on the year-end reviews, but um, mine has uh, the D2K kit in it, and also the, um, God, I forgot all this stuff. <laughs> the, uh, Donkey Kong Derange, is that what it is? Donkey Kong Remix. It's got the D2K kit and Donkey Kong Remix in there. Thanks for the super chats, guys. Judd. Dave repairs time runner. Thanks for being a member. Yeah, if you guys do like the member thing, there's like some. I'm trying out these new features on YouTube. So if if you sign up to be a member, I, I'm thinking maybe we could do like a member only like live stream or something. I, I have to figure that out. But um, thanks to everyone that's sending all the uh, the super chats. Thanks E Knowledge. Thanks Judd. Thanks Grand Theft Theft Watto. <laughs> Can't really see the chat very easily, but um, all right, let's. So anyway, uh, I, I I've had Donkey Kong forever. I had the two kits in here, um, so we've got a lot of Donkey Kong in this cabinet, 
And then, um, so right now it's on Remix. To switch to regular Donkey Kong, I gotta hold down the jump button. And so it resets, and now we're in Donkey Kong 2, which has the, the OG Donkey Kong on it. So, like I said, we're gonna keep it light today. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I lost my signal when I moved the, uh, <laughs> damn it, hang on. All right, it's back, sorry. When I moved the uh, camera, I bumped the HDMI cable. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll just let this game end. So I, I'm tethered to my PC with my camera. I'm using my normal camera. And uh, I did get some gaffer tape and, and tried to secure the cable, but I guess I didn't do a great job. All right, let me just kill myself, and we'll try this again. So again, thanks to all that are sending the Super Chats. Just die. All right, let's try it again. And, uh... So I bet you in the past year, I've probably played this game like maybe 10 times. Um, definitely a little bit rusty. So I think later this week or over the weekend, I don't know when, I'm going to bring the NBA fast break to the garage and order 
an LED kit for it and shop it out. Um, Because obviously with COVID, things uh, at the bar are a little different. Shit! I'm just gonna kill myself. Can't die in the first level. So you can see my high score is 167, 400 since we started doing these Quest 4 videos. Um, that's when I reset the, uh, the leaderboard on my, uh, on my board. All right, let's try this again. die <laughs> oh my god john's quest for twenty thousand points i'm just gonna keep playing let's just clear this level and get out of here Wild barrel shit, don't, no, no. Ugh. So you can't really control the uh, barrels very easily in the beginning. So I do have that arcade one up still, <laughs> the centipede one. Um, we should definitely do a video of that. Should I bring the box to the garage and we'll build it out there? Is that thing hard to put together? Should I get an entire arcade of arcade one ups? That's a good grouping. So now that I'm on the right side, they're all gonna spawn on the left side. And then when you jump right here, press right in the air and you'll get 100 points every time. And if you're not aware of this trick, I'm earning points faster than the bonus clock. Oh shit, there's one more? Oh my god. <laughs> wow, I really am rusty. <laughs> I didn't even do my pattern right. <laughs> I 
That was pretty dumb. I'm actually gonna leave this level with a lot of points, more than usual. I usually try to be at 13,000 points when I exit this level, and we're gonna be way more than that. Now, hopefully these guys will cooperate and let me f actually pass the level. All right, come on up here. We're gonna have to just get out of here. Alright, so here I usually just jump. And then I blow off the hammer now for the rest of the game. It's just not worth it. I tend to do better if I blast through this level. And we're gonna be able to start kind of controlling the barrels. I don't like this grouping. So we got 30,000 something. No, 28,200. Oh my God. for it on this level the first time. Well, this is a pretty bad game and I have no lives left. I feel like I can't take any chances. So thanks again for all the super chats. Kyle Butler, Tilly's Arcade. Um, when you can really more or less control the barrels. All 
right. So, this is where I either do it or I fall apart. I don't like the spacing. All right, good. So we're at uh, 57,300. Shoot. Hurry. Pretty lucky right there. Come on. Almost 75,000, not bad. Considering how bad I did in the beginning. So, as you can imagine, I have a ton of viewer mail. <laughs> um, so thanks to everyone that reached out to me, wanting to know uh, if I was alive. Two eight hundred. So I try to make it so all those guys are on the left before I go up. And generally speaking, if I pass this level, I almost always get a hundred thousand points. But I don't want to jinx myself. Ninety thousand eight hundred.
All right. So 97, 98, 900. It's real. Oh, I did it. Stay down there. Stay down there. Shit. Come up here. Come on. Come up here. Come on, dude. Come up here. Great, great, great. Well, that's it. <laughs> 105, 500. That's okay. Um, I'm looking at all the uh, here. So Neil McRae, thanks. Uh, Mike Martin, thank you. Eight hundred and fifty people right now watching. Crazy. Jeff Kinder, thank you. Matt L. Delusional, thank you. Brian Coogan, Ryan Grady, JJ, Kyle Butler, Tilly's Arcade. Like I said before, Mr. Laser Light. Sorry if I missed anyone. Z71, Josh, thanks for being a me new member. So thanks, guys. All right, why don't we uh, do some viewer mail? And like I said, we're just going to kind of keep it light and uh, today. And let me see if I can get this camera back over there without disconnecting the HDMI. So that's not the original bezel. This is like from a, I don't know what that's from. It's not the right one, though. It should be paper. So I'll kind of... So, um... Jump bugs over there. All right, are we back? On your mark. Get fit. <laughs> All right, it's back. Um, so if I do this again, I definitely got to... Um, I definitely have to uh, secure the HDMI a little bit better to the tripod. I don't know what you guys heard or didn't hear, but I was just saying that um, everything in general in the basement has been working, uh, you know, with the exception of Paperboy, it's been down for a while. And the Golden T monitor has been kind of dim, and which kind of bums me out because I actually really enjoy playing that game. And uh, I don't know if I should, should, uh, should I uh, try to uh, rejuve it, which for some reason scares me because if I screw that up, um, 
I don't have a replacement or do I just try to find a replacement for it? But it's, it's kind of dim. All right, so viewer mail. Um, I got a ton of viewer mail uh, the past year, as you can imagine. Um, and a lot of it, you know, wanting to know when I'm making videos again. So I went through and I printed a bunch here. Um, I just kind of grabbed a bunch of random ones and we'll just kind of go through it. Uh, so, all right, this one's from Bob. It says, uh, and by the way, if you guys want to send uh, viewer mail, you could send them to John at johnsarcade.com. John at johnsarcade.com. Can be a question, can be a comment, can be whatever. Just send it to John at johnsarcade.com. We'll read it here on the show. All right, this one is from Bob. It says, Pac-Man Cocktail Restore. Hey, man, I uh, just wanted to thank you for your videos. They've given me the kick in the butt and confidence I needed to start a restore on a Pac-Man cocktail table cabinet. Uh, the base was totally shredded from being dragged around with no feet. All I can say is Bondo works miracles. I'll get it painted as soon as USPS delivers the cans of Rust-Oleum Satin Black they say are coming today. The new glass with silkscreen artwork was due today, but I'm a while out from installing it. Just as well, it's late. The screen is good. The PCB needs some love, and I took it as far as I could, so it's going out to Mike's Arcade for repair. Bob. Not really a question, <laughs> but Bob, uh, congratulations on the Pac-Man cocktail. I, I do think those Midway cocktails are probably the best designed cocktails. I just think that's like a very iconic and standard cocktail. And it's kind of the one I remember seeing the most when I was a kid. Um, so congrats on the Pac-Man. Hopefully you get that all working soon. Uh, this is from Paul. Uh, he says, uh, been a long time, quick question. I was browsing YouTube recently and realized that it's been a really long time since I've seen anything from the garage or the basement. I hope you're doing well and that you and your family are keeping safe with what's, with what's going on these days. Yes. Everything is fine. I took a break. Now for my quick question. I was watching a video by Lazy Game Reviews today showing his home setup for playing arcade PCBs hooked up to a power supply, JAMA adapter, controller, and a TV, and was wondering if you had a similar setup for testing playability of PCBs without hooking, up, hooking them up to the cabinet. Also, what would you recommend as a bench tester sort of thing for quick testing of PCBs? I hope to hear back from you. I hope to see you on YouTube when you're ready to come back and hope you stay safe, Paul. So yeah, I've never built any kind of text fixture and I've always tested everything in the cabinet. Uh, I know my friend Jay has a text fix fixture set up uh, in his kitchen. <laughs> yes, in his kitchen. And he always has little arcade get togethers and he brings out, you know, like a big uh, a uh, Atari transformer and the AR power supplies and the harness and uh, you know, kind of troubleshoots things right there on the kitchen. My friend Adam has uh, a setup in his little uh, lab in his basement. He has like a Commodore 64 monitor, I'm pretty sure he's using, uh, with, um, with a JAMA harness, with different adapters, you know, like to hook up a Nintendo PCB. So there's various ways of doing it, and basically you're just kind of taking all the parts that would be in the cabinet and putting them on like a piece of plywood or something. Um, but no, I've never done it. I've never really felt the need to do it because I, for whatever reason, I, I mean, I don't really repair PCBs. I kind of just troubleshoot them. You know, a lot of reseeding chips and, and, and just kind of educated guesses on how to fix things. And for the most part, I've been able to just use the cabinet to test the games. Um, but I know I've gone to my friend, you know, like Adam's house with the PCB and said, hey, can you, can we just throw this on your bench? It is way easier to kind of probe around and, and push on chips and stuff and figure out if, if things are actually, you know, good or bad. So, and then there's also something called a super gun, which I, I've never really looked into heavily, but it's basically like a, a way to consoleize a JAMA PCB, you know. Uh, where you would have a controller and maybe uh, you know some kind of a video conversion where you can hook it up to a TV um, and you basically take your JAMA PCB and you plug it into like almost like a console and then you can have an arcade game on your television set. So look up Super Guns. I mean, that might be the simplest way to, to test and run JAMA PCBs or you have to just build one yourself, you know, which means getting the power supply, getting a transformer, an isolation transformer if you're going to have a monitor hooked up to it and then the harness, and then potentially the buttons and all that stuff. Um, so, Paul, I hope I answered your question. Uh, this one is from Rich. It says, hey, John, I had uh, been arcade-less for the past two years. 
since the arrival of baby number four, and I just scored a Grail game yesterday. Drum roll. It is an assault from Atari in 1988. And that, that's like a tank game, I think with dual sticks. Uh, I sure miss your vids and have started rewatching some of the old ones. I know we all go through phases. Any chance uh, of you bringing the arcade channel back? Curious as I was a big fan of yours and got motivated to have 10 arcades in my basement at one point. Hope you're well, brother. I miss your enthusiasm. Take care, Rich. And he sent, we're gonna be doing this old school here. <laughs> there's, there's a little thumbnail of his assault. Um, that's kind of an interesting game. It has a vertical monitor, um, two joysticks. It's a tank game. I, I, I've played it a couple times. I, I, I don't really know the gameplay in and out, but I know it's, it's kind of a unique, very tall and narrow Atari cabinet. You know, kind of like Tubin in a way. It's, it's kind of the same era of Tubin, isn't it? So anyway, Rick, uh, Rich, congrats on your assault. Uh, this is from Steven. Um, he has a lot of questions here. <laughs> hey, John, it's been like a year since your last video. Uh, how's Paperboy doing for you? Well, it's still down. And, and like I said earlier, I replaced the bridge wreck. I, I don't know what's wrong with it. I, I don't think I have a power supply issue. And what's happening is I have really low voltage on the bottom board, which I think is the video board. I don't remember. And and the power supply tests fine when it's not under load, but when it's under load, it brings the voltage down. I don't believe I have a dead short anywhere on that board. You know, if I test five volts to ground, you know, there's no continuity and all that. So I did a lot of research on the topic and I, I kept seeing people talk about the bridge rectifier on the transformer causing all kinds of weird problems like I'm having and actually exactly what I'm having. So I replaced that bridge, but I never put it all back together. So I need to do that to just figure out if I actually fixed it or didn't. Uh, he also says, is the iRobot machine working fully? Well, I had that PCB repaired by one up and I, he sent it back. I have it. I haven't put it back together. Um, so we, we got to do that. Uh, he says your monitor on the Pong machine needs to be looked at. <laughs> It's a little glitchy. It's pretty old. Yeah, I know. That, that TV, you know, who knows, caps or something's out of spec in it. Or maybe it need, the solder needs to be reflowed. But it does work. Uh, did Franz ever get to look at the Philips laser disc player from Firefox? Now, I got to tell you, someone told me recently. I forgot who it was. They sent me a link. He died. Uh, Franz died. And... Uh, so yeah, that's kind of sad, and I think people in like a laser disc forum or something were talking about him because he was like a legend, and yeah, he died and uh, unfortunately, and and he does still have my laser disc player. I mean, that's okay. I mean, my Firefox, well, Firefox is still down. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I do have the uh, Dexter board which replaces the uh, unreliable Philips. So, but yeah, unfortunately, Franz passed away. So Franz. Uh, sorry, man. Uh, what about the TM Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cabinet project? Still in the garage. <laughs> and the Mechanical Pinball Bronco, still in the garage. Yeah, nothing's happened here in the past year. It's exactly the way it was when we left off. Um, and what about the numbskull arcades like Pac-Man, Tempest, Arcade 1-Up? So, all right, so let's talk about that. So I have right here this. Okay, so we're actually giving this away right now on my podcast. So... This is the Numbskull uh, official Namco Pac-Man game. So if you go to Video Game Outsiders, it's a quarter scale. If you go to VideoGameOutsiders.com, you can enter a drawing to win this. So just go to VideoGameOutsiders.com, click on like the news, like all news, and there's a post in there linking to the raffle to give this away. So we're going to be giving this away soon. And I might open this up and do like a little review or unboxing before I send it to the winner. So you guys tell me, do you guys, you guys want me to open this up and review it? Because we can, um, but we're definitely giving it away. So go to videogameoutsiders.com and enter the, the giveaway. And then as far as the other numbskulls, we're going to be giving away the Galaga. I have uh, the Tempest and, and I have Street Fighter mini arcade cabinet. And they're sending me a Dragon's Lair. <laughs> so... Yeah, there's, there's a lot of these mini arcade cabinets. And uh, so we'll be talking about all of them to some degree. And uh, the Dragon's Lair one, 
actually has me kind of interested. I'm very curious what that's going to be like. Um, and I just got an email from them saying that it was delayed, but I should be getting it soon. So I don't, I don't know when they're releasing that, but I'm kind of excited about that. But for now, if you guys want to win uh, the Pac-Man Quarter Scale Arcade, go to VideoGameOutsiders.com. And again, it says news, hit news, like all news, and there's a bunch of posts. And one of them is, is about that and then a link to the, uh, to the contest. Um, uh, also, uh, yeah, that, that, the hap, uh, hap light gun on your red tent. Wow. That, um, yeah, I do have somewhere in my house a conversion board, um, from, I think it was Ross's arcade. Uh, we never got around to that and I don't even know where that board is. I have to find that. Ra God, boy, this guy noticed everything. <laughs> Raspberry jam adapter. Yeah, I have that still too. Um, I do have a, I, I bought a Raspberry Pi JAMA adapter. That's somewhere over there, I think. Um, my Raspberry Pi, I took the memory card out of it and I used it in a camera <laughs> on a trip I took. And so I basically formatted the Raspberry Pi. So I'd have to redo the ras Raspberry Pi completely. Um, what happened to you, John? Um, uh, do, he goes on here. Uh, what happened to you? I hope to see you soon. Uh, he says, Doc Mac from Galloping Ghost Arcades looking for an R360 G Lock. That is his holy grail now. Do you know anyone here in the USA, even Canada, that has one? So, G Lock, was that like a Sega flying game and the 360 is like the big ball of motion thing? Now, when we were at Galloping Ghost, uh, didn't, they ha didn't he have some full motion thing like that? I don't remember. So, he's looking for one of those. Um, also, his Holy Grails are two title laser disc games, uh, Ninja Haze and Time Gal. Uh, by the way, have you ever seen an R360 in person throughout your life? I don't think I have, but I feel like I did. Uh, there's also an R360 Wing War with a throttle stick included, uh, a button. He has Galaxy Force 2 Super Deluxe Cabinet. And apart from his arcade, have you seen it anywhere? I know Canada has it in location. Uh, or YouTube, Sarah Zelinsky played at the Skylon Tower. Finally, you know TX1 that you played at Fun Spot, which was like that multi-screen pole position kind of sequel. Um, he says uh, that you've played at Fun Spot even in the 80s somewhere else, or maybe the 90s. But did you know there's a sequel called TX1 V8, and the game is preserved to MAME, although not on the list of games. Um, I'll tell you, the game's super ultra mega rare. Uh, more so than TX1, because it only got a Japanese exclusive release. Regards, Steven. So, Steven, I hope we answered all of your questions. <laughs> the one thing I don't miss is how the games heat this basement up. It's nice in the winter, not so nice in the summer. All right. Sinistar Prototype. All right, this is from James. Hey, John, I love your channel. I'm doing a fairly elaborate video game build from scratch it's a new design concept for a sinistar game it's going to be a pepper's ghost style display and i'm reworking all of the art now i had to google this i didn't know what pepper's ghost meant and it is a, like an optical illusion so at, at disney uh is it haunted mansion there's a, a part where they have goats like dancing on the ballroom and stuff and i guess that's a pepper's ghost illusion and it's a bunch of mirrors and, and some kind of you know th magic like that that projects a ghostly image as if it's almost like a hologram. And so he says he's going to do that with Sinistar, which would be really interesting to see. Uh, he's reworking all the art. Uh, he's using elements of the original cabinet. The goal is to create a game that looks like it could have been a prototype back in 82. It's a surprise gift for a friend. Just say top secret. Should I not be reading this? Um, <laughs> who loved the game as a kid. I don't have any specific questions right now. He said it's a surprise. I mean, he did send it to viewer mail. Um, so here's the cabinet. He, he's scratch building. Nice plywood cabinet. Um, so, yeah, keep me updated on that. And, like, send me a video, because I'm curious about this Pepper, Pepper's Ghost-style display. Like, I, I can't... I mean, there's been plenty of arcade games that use, like, half-silver mirrors to kind of project the image over artwork behind it. You know, Asteroids Deluxe, which I used to have, and and, and uh, a lot of the kind of vector games did that, especially the Asteroids series of games. 
Um, I think, was there, a, yes, no, the Space Spaders had a, uh, a gel overlay. I don't remember. Anyway, keep me updated. I, I'd like to learn more about that as you progress. Um, he did send that email a month or so ago. Maybe he's done. Uh, next one here uh, is from Jamie. And it simply says, what kind of multimeter do you use? <laughs> That's it. What kind of multimeter do you use? Well, Jamie, I will show you. Well, <laughs> on your mark. I'm not sure if we're we're up or what. Yeah, we are. All right. So I just something bad just happened to my camera. When you figure, so. On the bottom of my camera, the tripod mount, okay, like the plastic area was kind of stressed and it just broke off. The tripod mount on the bottom of my camera just broke off because the camera kind of leans heavy to the right because I have a light and I have my wireless mic set up and it, it literally just broke. And uh, <laughs> so we're almost done with the video. I'm going to have to figure out a way to fix this. Um, <laughs> uh, the plastic maybe dry rotted from sitting for so long. <laughs> so um, right now the camera is kind of leaning on the tripod. Um, <laughs> Oh my God, I just broke my camera. Like, I, it's seriously, the, the, the tripod mount just ripped out of the bottom of the camera. So I don't know if I have to get some epoxy or something and... <laughs> uh, well, well, I was gonna show you guys this. I'm afraid to move the camera because the HDMI is gonna probably pop out again. <laughs> So we'll try to just finish the video like this <laughs> with the camera pointing at the wall. So, oh my God, I can't get over here. So, um, <laughs> I can't believe this. <laughs> uh, well, so this is my little toolbox, okay? And when I go to the hangar, to work on games, this is what I bring. And I, I found this really kind of badass plastic, hard plastic case at Home Depot. And Escoelito sent me all these Paul Peralta stickers, so thanks, Esk. But this is pretty much all I need to fix most things when I'm there. Can't fix everything. But the common things that go bad, uh, I can usually handle with what's in here. And a lot of times I don't even need tools uh, to fix stuff that goes wrong. But this is my multimeter and it's a Fluke 117 and uh, I really like it. Uh, it has a lot of features that I don't even tap into. Uh, mostly I'm using it for continuity, which I use a ton. Uh, ohms for measuring resistance. Uh, I use the diode test right here. And then it also tests AC and DC voltage. So that's all I'm using on here. Um, it does other stuff down here. I don't even know what those symbols mean. But I like it. It's very accurate. It's very durable. It's about $150. So it's a Fluke 117. And then the rest of the stuff in here, it's just mostly hand tools and cordless screwdriver, you know, wrenches. Uh, you know, you got to have a whole bunch of security bits to get into uh, 
to get into some of the games, you know. Um, I do have my TV adjustment tools for adjusting monitors, but really not a lot of specialty stuff, just my little socket sets in here, you know, screwdrivers and channel locks, uh, a spare battery and a flashlight usually. I had to remove the flashlight recently when we lost power, so that's upstairs somewhere. And then I carry this little USB key, I keep it in here, and I use this to update the Stern pinball machines uh, because uh, we have, well, Ghostbusters, they released an update. Uh, we have Stranger Things that they've been updating since it was released, uh, Jurassic Park. So I just bought a, uh, a USB stick that I just keep in my case, and every time there's an update, I, I grab it and, and throw it on, and then we update the game. So, so yeah. The Fluke 117. But, you know, if I can't address a game with what's in this box, then, you know, I would, I would have to go home and get something else and go back, you know. But a lot of times, a lot of this stuff is really stupid. You know, coin jams or... Um, low voltage or, or things like that, you know, it's still mostly coin jams that takes a game down. So, all right, guys. Well, this is kind of a weird way to end the video, but I can't really move the camera. <laughs> and I have to figure out a way to fix it now. <laughs> um... Yeah, I do need to do a video on the Stranger Things pinball. You know, uh, the the hangar is open right now, but we're not operating games. And uh, we don't know when. We The owner might talk to the city and see if it's okay because there's other places that are operating, like pool tables and stuff. So right now the games are just sitting and not being used, and it's kind of a serious bummer because um, we had just bought Stranger Things. We bought Jurassic Park. Uh, you know, the new Stern pinballs, I think, are pretty great, honestly. I, I love Stranger Things. I think a lot of the players like Jurassic Park more, but I really dig Stranger Things. It's, it's, a, lot like, um, it's a lot like Attack from Mars, uh, and it's it designed by the same guy. And it has a really cool uh, feature in the middle. This, you know, you're, you're shooting like the, uh, the laboratory or whatever in Stranger Things where they did all the experiments. And you're shooting it, trying to get uh, the door to come down. Uh, you're, you're basically trying to tear the building down, and then it turns into a ramp. And then behind it is uh, Gorgon or whatever that creature is called from the, from the with the, the flower head, uh, the alien. And you have to hit the ball into his mouth, and uh, it's pretty challenging. And it's a super cool game. So yeah, I, I'm sure that we're gonna go to the hangar soon here, and and I'll show you guys what's going on. So all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody. I, I cannot believe how many people showed up for this. I mean, I don't know if we hit 1,000 total. It was like 900-something before. So I, I just want to thank you guys for all the support. I want to thank everybody that has been sending donations. Um, Justin, Mike Martin, Neil McRae, Jake McCormick as a member. And there is that kind of like new member thing on there. So if you guys hit join, we're, we're going to try doing like a private kind of stream, you know, for people that do that membership button. So it's a new feature that I never really took advantage of. Um, it's been around for a year or so, but I never really did anything with it. So if you guys want to do that, push that join button. And again, thanks to everyone that sent the super chats. Um, you know, thanks a lot, guys, for hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this. <laughs> but we're going to stop here. I'm gonna, I have to go to my computer and stop the stream. And then we might do another video later this week. We'll see what happens. And again, don't forget, uh, go to videogameoutsiders.com and, and uh, you'll see you'll see in the new section a link that allows you to enter to win the quarter scale uh, numbskull pac-man game so all right guys thanks for hanging out later bye